Welcome back, Chapter 3, Part 2. And we're going to pick up where we left off. And what we're going to try to go and discuss are the types of carbohydrates that are not digestible. And these are the ones I was referring to that were beta length, not alpha, which are the ones we can break down. Uh, but this is uh, important. This is the dietary fiber that everyone needs uh, to make sure we don't have a buildup of toxic materials or bacteria that we need to move on. Uh, this is typical for truck drivers and the like. Uh, higher risk for developing a colon cancer because they need to move things on and because of their driving schedule they tend not to. So carbohydrates serve as structural materials for invertebrates, animals, and plants. Chitin or chitin, either way is correct. One's more of a Greek way of saying it. Cellulose. And uh, chitin is sort of the heart. If you look at a lobster in the red shell that's, that's made out of uh, uh, chitin, it's really tough. Cellulose is a dietary fiber, helps clear the digestive tract, and of course reduce the risk colon cancer and other diseases in doing that. I'm a big fan of probiotics and we'll talk more about probiotics later. This is sort of a, in conjunction used together to really make sure that you have good uh, intestinal health. A lot of things come from the intestine in terms of uh, the things that we need for food of course but also our immune system is trained and uh, interacts and all sorts of other things are very essential. Uh, structural properties of biological molecules like glycogen, we talked about uh, amylopectin is used to highly branched, uh, usually 8 to 12 residues of glucose. Cellulose is a beta 1,4 link that has a unbranched structure. It's usually a plant cell material that uh, store their glucose so they can get back to it, but they don't want animals eating it. Uh, because you know it's not good for business. An important source of fiber in the diet not hydrolyzed by digestive enzymes has no real caloric value but it is a solid mass that helps move things on. Now you may have seen ruminants or cows on the side of the road chewing their cud and that sort of thing and they have a specialized stomach for this but really the key ingredient for uh, all of the breakdown of the cellulose in the plant material which the cows are eating is the bacterial digestion. They they contain the enzymes that can break the beta links and release the glucose and the rumen. Uh, in these ruminants, uh, the rumen is the uh, this animal's stomach essentially and you have the different components but it's designed for regurgitation and moving it around so you get good enzyme environment for the bacteria uh, to secrete and, and the breakdown until the organism helps break and release the glucose from the roughage material uh, or the plant material. Now uh, cows are not the only ruminants or other ones that if you go home and listen very carefully and you hear a little bit of chewing in the walls uh, and I'm just kidding about that it could be your friends uh, the uh, uh, the destructors of uh, wood essentially and you get these termites that will start chewing and eating. Now the termite itself can't break down the cellulose and this is really why they're chewing it but the bacteria in their gut just like the ruminant will break it down into the sugars and various other things and it's again very interesting but uh, uh, these are very disruptive if you have a termite infection in your home or any wood that's being exposed to the ground that hasn't been treated uh, for one thing or another. And so I didn't know that about your termite friends, but they, they are little lean, mean uh, house eating machines. And uh, anyhow, the bacteria make it all possible. So in summary, complex carbohydrates, including Chitin and cellulose can not be gen uh, digested by most animals and this indigestible carbohydrate we call fiber aid in the digestion and numerous health benefits of moving the bulk of material through the digestive system. Okay, lipids are macromolecules or fats including energy storage and there I am uh, and that, that's me yeah 
uh, contains significant uh, carbon hydrate bonds than carbohydrates, which store more energy. Insoluble in water, and they're hydrophobic uh, versus hydrophilic. In other words, they fear water. In other words, fats don't mix. Oil and fats don't mix. You've heard that. And hydrophilic molecules uh, will uh, mix. And, uh, you know, there's various things like uh, you can use uh, vinegar and water. They mix with each other and uh, various other types of ammonias and things. And those are hydrophilic types. And so we have lipids that are greasy to touch. They are a significant source of energy storage. And they're nonpolar. In other words, they don't dissolve in water. So they function long-term energy. They function to regulate with hormones and various things. And then phospholipids that make up our cellular membranes. These are important aspects. And he's got a lot of it uh, sitting over here. Uh, but you haven't seen me because I've been hiding behind uh, my computer. But uh, that's back in my skinny days. Okay. So in summary, lipids are insoluble in water, greasy to the touch. They're valuable to organisms in long-term energy storage, insulation, membrane formation, and as hormones. So let me talk about something that uh, we, I think it's important uh, that you're aware, and you may already be aware if you're uh, when, uh, involved in health and making decisions. Dietary fats differ in degree of saturation, so you can have saturated and unsaturated fats. So here's a structure of a triglyceride or a fat. You can see the head, which is a glycerol. It's just sort of a simple sugar, uh, but bound to it are three fatty acid uh, tails, the long carbon chains that fall from them. And this is a triglyceride because there's one, two, three chains of these uh, sort of the carbon chains that, that we call uh, glycerides. And uh, of course, energy is stored in the chemical bonds that we've already talked about. And it's important, fats and oils. And we're going to talk about the difference between fats and oils uh, from a chemistry point of view. It's really straightforward. But uh, there's certain strong taste preference for fats over other energy and uh, storage that's evolved. And, and this is quite eminent, uh, evident when you look at uh, how ice cream's made. And they'll usually just cut a whole gallon or a container of ice cream in half and a taste tester what a job to have uh, I wouldn't last very long I probably wouldn't fit out of the building after the end of the year or so but they would taste the uh, ice cream and it's it's a funny effect if there's a good content of fat uh, it's more pleasing. There's receptors on the tongue, and through evolution, that, that's good for storage and long-term, and it's yummy. If if it's a low-fat type of ice cream or there's not enough fat in there, it'll taste it. It's just not as satisfying, and we may have experienced that or not. I don't know, but difference. One, one of the differences in that uh, pleasurement is saturated and unsaturated in describing fats and really it's just the amount of fully saturated saturating the uh, carbon molecule uh, in other words getting it to be fully um, uh, abundant with its hydrogens filling all the empty seats to satisfy the octet rule see it keeps coming back but unsaturated fats means that somewhere in the chain there's a double bonded carbon and as a result of that, it introduces sort of a different bond angle than the standard single carbon to carbon bond. If you have a double bond, it tends to rotate or move the chain uh, into a kink. And as a result of that, so the, the fats can't stack as well. Now let me show you what that the, the, the uh, implications are. So saturated and unsaturated do have some health effects. So uh, most animal fats, including these found in meat, eggs, are saturated. These are not essential to your health because they accumulate in your bloodstream and can narrow the blood vessels and contribute to heart disease. And we're going to talk about the slightly difference in uh, the way they stack. Uh, saturated fats, of course, are saturated and they fit just really nicely 
tightly packed and uh, they're bound by two and straight fatty acids can be packed so almost solid at room temperature that's why your butter would be a uh, saturated fat or a cheese or something like that because it's somewhat of a solid at room temperature unsaturated fats uh, at least one double bond and, and causes that kink they don't stack as well and as a result they're liquid at uh, room temperature and so uh, this is something that we consider with cholesterol now cholesterol is important uh, it's uh, it's a component of our cell membranes and there's a lot of reasons and I'll show you a, a movie that uh, illustrates this later on but uh, it's it's an important characteristic it tends to stiffen a little bit of the membrane and, and various other things uh, but it's a central molecule and uh, cells in our liver produce about 90 percent of all the circulating cholesterol by transforming saturated fats in our diet with excess cholesterol and fat a substance called plaque is a mixture of cholesterol fats and calcium and a clotting material can cause a hardening of the arteries it's more it's been explained to me by several of my friends who or heart surgeons and the like it, it's almost like a scab inside of the blood vessel and it doesn't get a chance to heal and it continues to fester and things will stick to it and it, it just starts to uh, cause more and more clogging and as a result it causes hardening of the arteries and can cause a heart attack or a stroke and that's not good so we want to try to limit things that we have uh, with saturated fats in our diet and try to use more of the fish oils and the like, like uh, things like that so what is a lipid it's uh, lipids come in a variety of structures so don't worry that uh, you know it's not that straightforward but uh, it is what it is and if it's stated as a lipid uh, it has a long chain type of, of characteristic to it lipids are defined on their physical characteristics most notably lipids do not dissolve in water and are greasy so that's kind of how we delineate that so Lipids are insoluble in water because of the sharp contrast or hydrophobic and uh, are nonpolar. Nonpolar molecules tend uh, to minimize contact with water and lipid clusters uh, together when mixed with water never fully dissolve. So that's kind of the characteristic of a hydrophobic um, type of material. And again, we have saturated and unsaturated so here is uh, coconut oil with it's saturated and we have a typical double bond uh, unsaturated oil in other words that we could do another hydrogen in there but as a result of that double bond it causes a kink now here's the rub there are some uh, manufactured types of fatty acids called trans fatty acids the cistran is a normal sort of bending that occurs with a double bond but there's some unnatural ones called trans in other words cis and trans are the way the bonds move and fold in 3d space so trans fatty acids don't kink as much but this has a rather large effect and the the overall statement here is we have things that can break this uh, uh, the unsaturated fatty acid down but we don't have anything that actually can resolve the trans fatty so it tends to build up more and those are really bad for us and so there's a link between saturated and unsaturated uh, types of fats uh, the saturated ones tend to be more related with cardiovascular disease and there's papers about that um, and so you can look more but more interesting are the trans fats it's due to a hydrogenation which artificially causes uh, not a cis form but a trans form of a double bond and causes it to kink just ever so slightly and this is the harmful uh, uh, orientation that we get and we're, it's in a lot of our foods and we're going to talk about that but hydrogenation can improve a food's taste and shelf life and there's a lot of 
things the bacteria don't like that can't really deal with the transform so they you know it's like that uh, article I read about a hamburger from um, McDonald's uh, the guy evidently put in his pocket of some coat he didn't wear for over like 15 20 years or something like that and the only thing that survived uh, I mean didn't survive was the pickle everything else the bread and all that and it, uh, it probably had some partially hydrogenated uh, fats in it and various other things so that's pretty gross if you think about it so anyhow um, so stay away from man-made fats is what I'm saying the standard cis trans uh, form uh, the cis form of the uh, uh, unsaturated fat versus the trans fatty and this is the one that we have to be careful of so where could this possibly be I know I don't come across that in my daily life but yeah you do and it tends to be a yummy yummy I'm sure for some of you it's like french fries a good example potato chips things like that that uh, go through uh, this high heat and various things and it tends to uh, hydrogenate uh, and it depends on the oil that they use of course but for the most part this unusual high temperature uh, will cause the formation of these bad types of cholesterol and I mean of the uh, uh, the uns uh, the saturated fatty acids that, that we see and as a result of eating these types of foods you run the risk of increasing the low density uh, lipids for the LDL cholesterol the bad one and decreases the good one well, of course I mean why else I mean that's why these are yummy yummy and it causes, of course, increases the risk of diabetes, coronary heart disease, and cardiac related sudden deaths, in addition to having a big belly and uh, not fitting in the Speedo like you used to. So, uh, the packaging on most of the foods will tell you that there's trans fats or not. Now, there is a lie about this, and I'll uh, go over this again. But uh, they may have this, and up here you see that there's a serving size. A lot of times, because this factor here is a known health risk, and so they want to be able to sport that zero gram on the package, what they'll do is they'll set the serving size to go to the legal amount of trans fat such that they can label that it doesn't contain trans fat so the government's kind of complicit in this because we're allowed to have a certain amount but not considered a health risk and so what manufacturers do uh, retailers or the manufacturers of foods will set their serving size so that it goes under legal definition of what trans fat is so two-thirds cup of whatever this product is well, not have trans fat but if you went to a full cup guess what you'd have a certain amount of trans fat in your food now it's got good you know it's got at least 12 grams of sugar which is terrible but of course we've got to have the sugar the yum yum to make it tasty and, um, and it has fiber so you can essentially reduce some of the hit of the sugar with the fiber uh, I won't go into that now but overall we're going to talk about reading nutritional labels because these are important that uh, help you uh, through your life because trans fats you can see that uh, we get these lesions in the blood vessels and they swell that's why they're kind of like scabs and scabs you know form that sort of hardened material and what happens is it doesn't allow the blood flow and when that blocks well bad things happen let's just put it that way and so they either go in put a stent in there or uh, other ways to ream it out so that uh, they can clear the blockage but that's why they recommend uh, these 81 milligram aspirins and things which doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense but nevertheless so the nutritional labels are really really important to read these things so you start with what the serving size are so there's two servings in this container for like this macaroni and cheese 250 calories which you know on average for us you're about 2,000 for me it's about oh I don't know two calories <laughs> anything above that I gain weight so um, and that'll happen to you as you get older but um, anyhow 
a calorie level uh you want to stay around 100 or so uh, depends you just don't want to you know i had a student once it was in my nutrition class and uh he brought in uh two big macs from mcdonald's and a maggie moo milkshake and so we calculated how many calories that was at this nine o'clock class and it was about 2300 calories all told together and so that was his daily intake for the day now you can imagine that the gentleman's a little bit overweight a lot bit actually but uh, because of the course he actually lost the weight and i still correspond with this student to this day it's, it's pretty cool that he's um, permanently lost the weight and you know it's healthier in the long run but you can see the trans fat three grams they just put it on there two two servings so you would really have six grams of trans fat you really want none is what you want and the sugars are kind of low but boy that would be a showstopper uh, with that amount of trans fat and then the cholesterol so anyhow it's uh, it's a lot and you can look at daily values um, and these are just rough estimates and they set these values from 18 to 22 year old uh, army uh, 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 folks that are in in the army back in what the 1960s or somewhere around there these standards were made and uh, it really doesn't represent very well the overall population but the government still uses the, these uh, daily um, values so anyhow uh, that's part of what's going on and just be aware so here's uh i know you hate twinkies no one likes Twinkies, and you can go to the fair and even get deep-fried Twinkies on top of that. But that's okay. Um, you can buy them at the store. And trans fat, zero grams, and we've got seven servings per container of these. So I'll guarantee you, you're going to get trans fat big time. And when you eat these, uh, carbohydrates, 32 grams, sugar, 16 grams. They should just go ahead and label it as a heart attack in a box i guess you it would be healthier to eat the box in fact uh anyhow that's kind of how i view it so fats include triglycerides common in the food that we eat only uh, one type of lipid characterized by long hydrocarbon tails fats effectively store energy in many carbon hydrogen or carbon carbon bonds and we talked about that there's a high caloric content per gram responsible for the humans preferring fats and and we will pick up the high calorie content every time that impulse to say no i i want to fit through the door uh from the store and that sort of thing and sometimes the evolution just speaks louder and you can't help it so what's the impact of fatty acids well the short-term study with 60 participants controlled diets for these groups and you look at cis trans and saturated fats and the results and conclusions they analyzed the blood samples from each of the subjects for the low density lipids which is associated with the increased risk of heart disease ldls were higher in the groups that uh, ate trans fats or saturated the hdls was reduced and that's just backwards what we want so they concluded that trans fat causes harm so in short dietary manipulations they found trans fats increase these levels and uh, the beneficial cholesterol were uh, uh, decreased increased the ldls which is really really bad for us so nick say on the twinkie uh, a uh, food there so french fries potatoes all the good things i know so rocks and sticks is all you can eat so cholesterol and phospholipids are used to build sex hormones i bet you didn't know that cholesterol important component of cell membranes causes uh, plaques and various things that lead to heart disease also is utilized in the formation of hormones as steroid hormones estrogen the female and testosterone the male let's look at that for a second so what i'm telling you is the difference between estrogen and testosterone so this at a certain stage of development of a new baby uh, that's in uh, vivo that we're still uh, developing at that young young age uh, gets a signal and the signal is decided really determined by the presence of these one or two of these hormones 
and estrogen and, and testosterone. And if you look at the difference between these two, so really you're looking at here in, in um, estrogen, we're devoid of this little CH3 group that's hanging there, and a double bonded uh, um, oxygen group, and a double bonded oxygen group. Uh, here in the estrogen, we had a single and a single on the male, so it's kind of reversed. And that right there, that slight difference is the only thing really different between estrogen and testosterone. So it's just, boy, is, is position of side groups important or not? I mean, it's the difference between a, a female and, and male uh, offspring. So uh, it's a really interesting, um, and what testosterone does in terms of flipping switches and the like for secondary sex characteristics and all these other things uh, as as in women too with estrogen and it's only difference by those that it's to me that's amazing I thought I'd just point that out so cholesterol is an important component of cell membranes it, it can attach the blood vessel walls and cause them to thicken which is not good and our cells in our liver produce about 90% of the circulating cholesterol. So you imagine the cholesterol managing drugs target the liver, I guess you would say, think. Uh, so here I am, uh, a picture of me, I know, uh, uh, it's, uh, well anyhow, it's, it's Arnold, it's, it's not me. So estrogen, many functions include uh, the regulation of memory and mood in both sexes. Testosterone include muscle growth and uh, there are synthetic and everyone said that Arnold uh, yes yeah, it's, it's Dr. V I guess that is Dr. V I look very similar to Arnold uh, I guess I would, my muscles are bigger than his anyhow but um, anyhow um, uh, unless I digress I'll just drop it there so phospholipids are the major component of cell membranes they differ in fats where they only have two fatty acid chains and a phosphorus atom in the glycerol head and so we only have two and unlike the triglyceride the phospholipid has the phosphate group attached to the glycerol uh, the smaller version and only two of the fatty acid chains it's really really interesting this is universal in cells and what happens is uh, these phospholipids if they're made they make a spontaneous micelle and it's a circular water droplet and it's it's the heads and tails all the tails will um, go to other tails so the like dissolves like and so those uh, are hydrophobic in nature in the middle and then the red is the hydrophilic on the other side so you can see this arrangement the outside of the cell can contain things that float or are attached to the phospholipid. Sometimes um, the, uh, they have proteins that are embedded all the way across and that sort of thing. But this is the hydrophobic region and hydrophilic regions on the outside. They do move around very, uh, this looks static, but it's not. It's constantly flip-flopping and moving and it's like, uh, buoys floating in the ocean type of thing it's uh, not anything near static so we're going to talk a lot about uh, phospholipid bilayers and things later on waxes are strongly hydrophobic earwax and that sort of thing they're long fatty acid chains they coat the surface of many insects plants and feathers because uh, walking on water we talked about the uh, hydrogen bonding and uh, some of these insects literally can walk in water. Well, the wax keeps it from uh, just sinking into the uh, water. The strength of the hydrogen bonds uh, allow it to float on the surface and the wax will tend to be waterproof so um, they won't uh, lose their footing. So summary, cholesterol and phospholipids are lipids that are not fats. They're important components in cell membranes and they serve as precursors to uh, steroid hormones, important regulators of growth and development. So we covered all of this and it's a lot and I understand that. Uh, next time in part three, we're gonna go on and talk more about structure and function of macromolecules, which is exciting and you'll have uh, hands-on stuff I'll try to provide for you. So until next time, be safe, uh, stay well, and I'll see you uh, shortly.